And now an illustration of the difficulties of reporting out of Syria. Uh, for weeks now, many people and many journalists have been gripped by a blog out of Syria. It's called A Gay Girl in Damascus, and it appeared to be the work of Amina Abdullah Araf al-Omari, a 35-year-old feminist activist who gave a very vivid picture in her posts of her life in Syria. No one ever met her or spoke to her or saw her, but... When it was reported that she'd been taken away by the security forces, there was outrage, there was a furore, and then there were the first doubts. And it's now emerged that Amina was, in fact, Tom McMaster, an American studying in Scotland. Opposition figures in Syria say that his blog endangered them, but he insists in saying that he has no regrets for what he'd done. Well, I discussed the case with the social media boss for the American NPR, National Public Radio, Andy Carvin. Andy was one of the first to raise the alarm. I have to admit that along with pretty much everyone else, I was captivated by her blog. She told amazing stories from a quite unusual perspective. But then when word came out on her blog that she had been quote unquote kidnapped, I started hearing from some of my sources in Syria very quietly saying that they were very suspicious of the whole matter. One of them said they thought it was an outright hoax, while a couple others told me that they just simply didn't believe some of the stories, particularly one story where she talks about her father shaming a couple of security guys preventing them from arresting her uh, and bringing her into custody uh, just by shaming and embarrassing these two guys and and the Syrians I talked to said look if, if state security came knocking on your door they're gonna take you away and if your father tries to stop them they're either gonna beat him up or kill him so this just doesn't make any sense so I started asking people on Twitter uh, early last week have any of you met her or talked to her directly and no one had and I tried expanding it beyond that, seeing if anyone knew of anyone who had done it, any news organizations that had talked to her. And the more I looked, the more I saw all the conversations people had with her was through text, email, uh, text chat and the like, but not through voice, not meeting in person, not through video. A gay girl in Damascus turns out to be a bearded American 40-year-old uh, living in Scotland. <sighs> Let's talk a little bit about why it had to be a gay girl in Syria. How clever was the construction of the, of the persona, and how cleverly was that designed to hook us all in? Well, why did it have to be a gay girl? For one thing, just think of the title, A Gay Girl in Damascus. It's, it's, it's such a phrase that you wouldn't expect something like that to be possible. What courage it would take for a young woman to be speaking openly about being gay in a city that's essentially part of an, an enormous civil conflict right now. She wrote very well. She interacted with all of her followers. Everything about it was really compelling. On top of that, if you looked into her history as, as this persona, Amina Araf, She's been online as this persona for over five years now. She's been part of discussion lists and various online forums. She had a blog back in 19, uh, 2007, 2008. So it's not like this character just appeared out of nowhere in February. They had, she had a long history of interacting with people. McMaster uh, updated his blog, and he had a very interesting phrase. He said, while the narrative voice may have been fictional, the facts on this blog are true and not misleading as to the situation. Situation on the ground. Now, surely in journalistic terms, that is completely unacceptable. Whatever he thinks he's doing, that is not something that should carry on in a journalistic sphere and be covered by people such as NPR or the BBC. No, I think you're right. It's, I, I, probably what he was trying to say is that his blog is representative of the situation of people on the ground in Syria, especially members of the LGBT community. But I, I'm sorry, that that's not good enough. He's, uh, he ultimately ended up fooling tens of thousands of people, many of whom thought they knew this person, some of whom loved this person over a period of months and years. So to say that uh, that in essence it was true, even though the narrative was uh, was fictional, I, I think he's got a lot more to answer for than that. And that's the social media boss of American National Public Radio, Andy Carvin, one of the first people on the trail of the gay girl in Damascus who turned out to be an American bloke. It's been 